everybody just wanted to give you a basic uh, video about the most simplest motion diagrams so a motion diagram is a physical representation that physicists use to describe motion and today I want to go over the major features here of any motion diagram that we make for class so motion diagrams are also called motion maps and a simpler version of a motion diagram is a dot diagram but we're going to be using motion diagrams for our class. Okay, so the first step here is we need to have a coordinate grid and notice that we've got directions already depicted. So I made to the right the positive direction and to the left the negative direction. And it, we could have made to the left positive or to the right negative. This is just how I set up this reference frame. And then what we have in the background here is your basic number line. And you can see we have our zero meter mark uh, right over here. Okay, what comes next? First thing that we want to do is we want to add a dot that shows the initial position of the object. So for this particular example, I have the object's initial position at the negative 5 meter mark, and I mark that with x sub 0 for x initial. The next thing that we want to do is we want to add dots for each subsequent position. So I've labeled those x1, x2, x3, and x4. Each of these positions represents the position of the object at a particular clock reading. Most of the time when you construct a motion diagram, the time interval between each of these positions will be one second. And for this particular example, it's exactly what I did. The zero second clock reading appears at x initial, and then one second later, the object is at the zero meter mark. Two seconds later, this object's at the five meter mark. Three seconds later, it's at the 10 meter mark. Notice also that these subscripts for your positions match the actual clock reading. So that's why we start with x sub zero, for example, and um, not usually x1. I think this is a little more convenient. Okay, after we have the dots, the next thing we want to do, or we want to add velocity vectors. We start with the dots because once you have the dots, you can show the displacement by going from start, which in this case is going to be x initial here, this negative 5 meter mark, and I can draw a vector to the 0 meter mark. Now notice this could represent the displacement, right? I mean, the displacement would be x final minus x initial. So in this case, x1, 0 meters, minus x sub 0, negative 5 meters. 0 minus negative 5 would give you a displacement of positive 5, which is what this vector represents. But this vector can also represent velocity because this is the displacement per one second. So I'm going to label this vector v with a subscript 0. This is the velocity, the initial velocity, and this is the velocity at the 0 second clock reading. And what I can do is I can add in my velocity vectors for the rest of these, and all I'm doing is simply going from x initial to x final for each of these segments. Okay, so now I have my velocity vectors set up. So let's kind of just go over the main features of motion diagrams. First thing is to label positive and negative directions in a coordinate grid. The second feature is the dots, and the dots represent the object's position at a certain clock reading. The third thing is to add arrows. These are velocity arrows, so they represent the velocity of the object, and they get this accomplished in two ways. The first thing that you notice is that they're vectors, right? They have these arrowheads, and so these velocity arrows can tell you the direction of the object's motion. And the second thing is that the size of the arrow tells you the magnitude of V. When I look at this number line, this velocity vector is 5 long, so this velocity is 5 meters per second. This one is 5 meters per second. This one's 5 meters per second. And the last one here is also 5 meters per second. So there's one more feature that we need to consider. 
and these are called change arrows and they represent the change in velocity between two velocity vectors. Now for this example that we're given here, the velocity actually doesn't change. V sub 0 is positive 5 meters per second and so is V sub 1, V sub 2, V sub 3. So if I wanted to find delta V, sometimes these change arrows are called uh, delta V arrows, or change in V arrows, you could say. Delta V between V1 and V sub 0 is 0. The velocity doesn't change. So how do we indicate that? If the velocity doesn't change, then we can go right in between this V1 and V sub 0. Say delta V equals 0 meters per second. And because this is also true between V1 and V2, and between V2 and V3, I'm just going to write this once for this whole pattern of motion. In the next example, let's take a look at one where the velocity does change and see how that affects how we create a delta V arrow. Okay, so here's the next example here. Let's imagine that we have an object that starts at the zero meter mark. So I'm going to label x initial as the zero meter mark. Now I have x1, and x1 here is equal to 10 meters. So I'm going to just write that here. I know that you could probably read the number line, but just so that it's clear, I'm going to write what the positions are equal to. x2 is this dot right here, and this looks to be at the 18 meter mark. Next, we have x3, and this x3 appears to be at the 24 meter mark. And I'm going to call this one x4, and this one is at the 28 meter mark. Okay, so we have all of our dots which represent the position of the object at different clock readings. So this represents where the object is at the zero second clock reading. Here's where the object is at the one second clock reading, the two second clock reading, the three second clock reading, and this one right here is the four second clock reading. Okay, next thing I want to do is let's put some velocity vectors in here. So I'm going to start with the first one. You start at zero meters going to 10. So this V initial is equal to positive 10 meters per second. V1, we're covering 8 meters. We're going from the 10 meter mark to the 18 meter mark. So this is going to be positive 8 meters per second. And I'm going to name this V1. Okay. I start at the 18 meter mark and I get to the 24. So for this interval, V2 is 6 meters per second. And V3 appears to be 4 meters per second. Okay, so now I have all of my arrows depicting the velocity. Notice that we can tell the direction by the arrowheads and the magnitude of the velocities by the size of the arrows. Now, looking right at the motion diagram, even if we didn't deal with the numbers yet, we could see that the V arrows get smaller as time goes on. So we know that this object is an example of an object that's slowing down. Okay, if I go from a V initial, I'm just going to draw it down here. If I have a V initial equal to 10 meters per second, and my V1, I'm going to draw right beneath it, is this long, is 8 meters per second. What did I have to do to get from V initial to V1? Did I have to take V initial and stretch it out longer? Or did I have to take V initial and squish it down? Well, if I look here, and I have V initial, I had to squish it down by this much to get to V1. And so this is the magnitude and direction of delta V. Sorry, it looks like an X there. Let me make it look like delta V. So this is our delta V vector. How big is it? Well, if this is 8, and we're missing this, right? Our delta V, the magnitude of delta V is equal to 2. And the direction in this case, because this is what we started with, the initial, and we had to squish it down, this is going to be a negative 2 meter per second for delta V. So in my diagram here, I'm going to write delta V is equal to negative 2 meters per second. And I'm going to draw in the vector about the size of 2 
of these meter marks. So we have delta V equals negative 2 meters per second. And let's just see if this pattern holds throughout all of the velocities, 10 to 8, 8 to 6, 6 to 4. So this object has this, con this constant pattern of slowing down. It's slowing down by negative 2 meters per second uh, every second. All right, let's try one more example where we are constructing a motion diagram where the velocity is not constant. So let's imagine we're giving the following position values, where x initial is negative 10 meters. So I'm just going to label this x initial is negative 10 meters. x1 is negative 5. And again, for your work in class, you don't need to write down the positions, but I just think that in the tutorial it may be difficult for people to see. So that's why I'm writing these out here. x3 is equal to 8 meters, and x4 is equal to 16 meters. Okay, so all of our positions are dealt with here. Now let's put in some of these velocity vectors. First velocity vector is called the initial. You started at the negative 10 meter mark, and now you're at the negative 5 meter mark. So the velocity here is going to be positive 5 meters per second. If the velocity were constant, then v1 would also be 5 meters per second. So let's check this out. I'm at the negative 5 meter mark, and I get to the 1 meter mark. It's my velocity. v1 is positive 6 meters per second. The delta V between these can be found by taking a look at our V initial. Our V initial was 5 meters per second. Now let's compare that to our V1, which is equal to 6 meters per second. And again, we want to ask ourselves, what did I have to do to V initial to get V1? Did I have to take this guy and stretch him out? Or did I have to take this guy and squish him down? And by this guy, I'm talking about this V initial vector. I had to take this and stretch it out by how much? By 1. And the direction for delta V is going to be positive because we had to stretch it in this direction. So I know that delta V between V initial and V1 is positive 1 meter per second. So that's about that big. Okay, let's check on the rest of these v-vectors. If we go from 1 meter to 8 meters in one second, the average velocity here is 7 meters per second. And from 8 to 16, that's our v3. The average velocity is 8 meters per second. So does the velocity change by 1 every single time, kind of pulling each arrow before it by 1 to the right? Yes, so this delta V of 1 carries throughout um, this whole pattern. I hope you found this helpful as you get started with motion diagrams. Let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you have a great day.